Good afternoon, everybody. Um, here's my video on the excretion systems and the urinary systems. So when I think of excretion, I want you to think um, waste rejection. Your body has its own way to get rid of unneeded or unnecessary waste from your body. So can you think of few? So if you said respiratory, yes, we exhale carbon dioxide. Um, urinary, we get rid of urinary waste. Um, obviously in the digestive system, you get rid of waste as well with the fecal matter. But let's look at other ones as well. If we look at the definition, the excretion systems remove waste, like I said before, from our body. Materials that are digested or processed in our body that but is no longer needed is eliminated through our excretion system. So excretion system is like the bigger umbrella that includes many other systems of your body. And one of them is your urinary system. Can you think about what this organ is? Guess what this organ is. If you said liver, you're correct. So the liver is one of the biggest organs that will get rid of waste, will filter out your blood, and uh, thanks to the bile, will help break down fats. And so um, some of the harmful systems, substances that you find in toxins um, will be excreted into bile or blood. If it reaches here, then you know it will. the bile will take care of it, and then you'll go to the washroom and poop it out. That's one way of getting rid of waste. So what I mean by waste, it's not just the typical carbon dioxide. Um, it is also, uh, once your uh, blood has gone through uh, the lymphatic system and got cleaned up that way, got rid of bacteria, all those extra um, cells that are not needed, that are from broken down bacteria, all of those will end up either being pooped out or uh, urinated out. So if it reaches the liver, then that means the bile byproducts enter the intestine and leave the body in form of feces. Blood byproducts are filtered out by kidneys, leave the body in form of urine. So there's either, either waste will go uh, and get broken down by bile, which then eventually gets pooped out, or uh, uh, in the blood that will go to the kidneys, the kidneys will filter them out and leave the body in form of urine. So it's like two ways. So here's a picture of a real kidney and uh, kidneys are located in the back completely, which is why sometimes people will mix, will confuse between back pain and kidney pain. And sometimes the doctors will check that area, those two, if there is a problem, sometimes the kidneys will be swollen and it'll be in the back next to your spine. And it really sits in the back beneath, like behind the digestive system. If you look more closely at the kidneys, they, their main function is to filter blood and waste from food, which then gets transported to the kidney and is expelled as urine. So that's another way. So this is a recap. Bile basically will get rid of waste via uh, the digestive system and kidneys will filter blood that has the waste, but via the urinary system. One that you probably didn't think about is your skin. Your skin also uh, has its own way of getting rid of waste. And as you may or may not know, the skin is the largest organ of your body. And it has uh, those famous sweat glands that you see here. And this one particularly um, is a sweat gland that is not attached to a hair, and this will produce a watery type sweat. You have other types of sweats that are attached, the sweat glands that are attached to uh, hairs and will actually produce a, um, a greasier type um, sweat, which is reasons why like this, this greasier type sweat will reach the skin surface and bacteria will try to, uh, will actually, sorry, thrive on it and produce fatty acids, which then creates that foul, smelly, sweaty smell, okay? 
And this explains why deodorants are used uh, to get rid of the smell. You have approximately 2,500 sweat glands on the surface of your body. These glands are responsible for producing sweat, like I said, that is released through the pores of our skin. So, like I said, you have sweat glands that are attached to a hair follicle and you have others that are not. So the ones that are attached, so for example, the ones that are in your armpits or in the scalp of your hair, of your head, uh, those will produce the, the, the smelly type sweat, the greasier one. Okay. Which also explains why sometimes you have t-shirts that have sweat uh, stains. It's because of the byproduct, uh, the fatty acids over time, um, it can leave a stain. So what does your sweat that contains water and waste? And waste can be in the form of heat, excess water, and salts. So by sweating, we remove these waste products and we also keep our blood balanced. You sweat in both cold and hot weather. The blood, when I say blood balanced, I'm talking about blood volume. And a very important one, to put a star next to that one, regulates your body temperature. And what is this organ called? Yes, the lungs, good job. The lungs, um, we'd already talked about the lungs when we did the respiratory system. And this is the one way for your body to get rid of carbon dioxide. Um, yeah, when you exhale. If we look more closely now at the urinary system, it's composed of four main things, four main organs. You have the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, and the urethra. So the urethra was mentioned before when we talked about the reproductive system. In guys, the urethra is longer because it's in the penis. In girls, the urethra is a lot shorter. The main function of the system is to help keep the body in homeostasis, which is another word for a balance. It keeps the body stable and regulated by getting rid of waste in the blood and restoring water so that the volume of blood is correct. So let's look at closely what the two kidneys do. They are both reddish brown bean shaped organs and you can actually live with one kidney. Some people sometimes can donate a kidney for a sibling or parent that has a problem with their kidney and they can live with just one. It has the following functions. It filters the blood and gets rid of waste in the blood, like I said before, through production of urine. Uh, helps to control the blood pH and helps regulate water and mineral levels. So when, um, when somebody drinks lots of cranberry juice, I don't know if you heard about this, cranberry juice actually really helps um, to get rid of um, urinary tract infections or bladder infections. So, and this is why it makes the, the area the, where the bladder is, it makes it uh, harder for bacteria to live in. The ureters are simply just two tubes that are 25 centimeters long-ish, um, and it really just links the kidneys to the bladder. It transports the urine and brings it all the way down to the bladder. The urinary bladder now is a muscle and it will expand when it's filled and it will reduce in size when it is emptied, of course. It can hold about one liter of urine and the only function is to store the urine until it is released. And all along the lining of the muscles, uh, the muscle of the bladder, you have uh, nerves. And a signal is sent to your brain when it is filled and you need to go to the washroom. Lastly, the urethra is a small tube containing, uh, coming from the urinary bladder and its function is to eliminate urine from the bladder to the outside. And like I said before, in men, the urethra is longer. Um, I encourage you to watch um, Operation Ouch. It's, they do a few interesting experiments with urine um, and they even show you an ultrasound of a full bladder versus an empty bladder. So I will put the link um, on Google Classroom. You can watch it uh, right after this. If we look at what is urine made up of now, obviously made up of water, 95% of water, 
but the remainder 5% are what we call urea. Urea is basically a broken down, broken down proteins. Um, broken down proteins are called amino acids. And when those break down, that's when you, what we have the product, the actual uh, molecule is called urea. And the rest 2.5% are minerals and other substances from your blood. So remember all the other wastes that I was talking to you about, medication, uh, drugs, and hormones. And that's why uh, women who think they are pregnant can do a pregnancy test because you have a little bit of the hormones released in there, in the urine, that will check for uh, pregnancy. How much water are you drinking? So the, the saying is to drink two liters of water a day. That's about uh, four, like if I take a bottle of water that looks like this, four times like that. So think about it. Are you drinking enough water? The more water you drink, the better it is because you are getting more, getting rid of more and more toxic waste. And so this helps. It helps a lot uh, with your skin, believe it or not. Um, and it helps maintaining a, like a good, healthy amount of minerals in your body. So you can tell from uh, when you urinate, the color tells a lot. If it's more on the clear side, then you have drank a lot of water. If you are more dehydrated, then the urine is very dark. Um, so question for you guys, when is your urine the darkest? Early morning or later on in the day? So if you've guessed early morning, you're correct. Early morning, uh, so all night, uh, unless you went to the bathroom in the middle of the night, but chances are generally we don't go urinate during the night. Um, that's why in the morning you wake up and the urine is the darkest. But as the day progresses and you drink sufficient amount of water or you eat fruits and vegetables that have water in them, your urine will be um, more and more clear. Some of the problems that people can have are kidney stones. Those very painful calcifications inside the kidney um, are very painful as you can see they will pass through because the urethra and the ureter, we're talking, they're a few millimeters wide, it's not that big. And the kidney stones, some of the biggest ones can be up to a centimeter thick. So you can imagine how painful that is for someone to have a kidney stone. And if the kidney stone move around, that's when it's painful. Even more painful when the person wants to urinate and they have to pee out the stones. So people who go through this will do, there's now, thanks to medical uh, procedures, they can actually do uh, a laser treatment that will break down the stone into smaller, smaller pieces. Then they can simply urine them, urinate them out. And then that means they pass the stone without having to do an invasive surgery. Really, this, this is what it looks like. A bunch of crystals, that, uh, that are bunched up, as you can see like that, and it didn't, didn't break down on its own. Some people are more prone to kidney stones than others. Uh, for those people, you may know who you are, you would need to reduce your salt intake um, and drink a lot of water, more water than usual. And what else? Um, oh yes, less red meat. Red meat can, if you are prone to stones, it's not helpful for you. The other more common um, type of problem are urinary tract infections, um, more in girls than boys, uh, because uh, everything for girls, as you know, is um, all on the inside, where for the boys, their reproductive system is all on the outside. So why I'm saying this um, is that for, uh, for an infection to occur, sometimes if there is a bacteria, um, it thrives when it's humid area, when it's dark, when it's closed. Um, so it's, what's important is to, have, to be wearing underwear that is made of cotton, at least the bottom area has cotton, to make sure there is an air circulation so that it doesn't stay, if there is humidity, it doesn't stay stuck there. So it's important to keep it aired out by wearing cotton underwear. Uh, some signs of urinary infections are burning sensation as you pee, uh, the urge to pee even though not much is coming out, 
um, a foul smell that is not usual for urine. For example, if it smells like feces rather than urine, then there is a problem. Of course, blood in the urine, that means probably the bacteria has reached the bladder, which is a problem. You need, really need to go get uh, checked by the doctor because issue, issues with that, people who don't take care of urinary tract infections, sometimes the infection can reach all the way up to the kidneys. And if it reaches the kidneys, then kidneys are not doing their job properly, filtering blood. Um, and then from there, it can reach the large, there's a large vein and a large artery. And if that happens, then they can bring up to the, to the heart. Once the circulatory system's involved, it's scary because then that's like the super highway to the rest of your body. Um, so please, if you see blood in your urine, uh, you have to go see the doctor right away. And they, they just give you antibiotics. It's really not a big deal. After like the procedure is easy, just take antibiotics. Or blood or cloudy pee. And, and all, any of these, if it's only if it's an ongoing like two, three, four days, it's not going away, it's still there, then, then you need to see a doctor. Sometimes you get a burning sensation and it's gone. But if it's an ongoing, then that's when you need to see a doctor.